What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Ladies, Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video, goes a long way for you. That way, you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods, my little uh, like lock, if you will. Obviously, I locked it, and some people just wanted to do whatever. But anyway, uh, they're up one nothing here as they're getting going. We're going to get recording, though, here because there's a ton to talk about on a 13 game slate. Got some weird pitching spots some interesting some it's an interesting split we got the dodgers playing the angels uh the battle of the five freeway we've got a couple of massive playoff in implication series my twins hopefully can find a way that is not what the way. it is really hard being a minnesota fan but it's not hard living in pennsylvania and being a bet 365 fan here's why you get yourself 150 dollars in bonus bets when you bet just five dollars down at the link below thursday the nfl starts don't know if you've heard of it it's pretty popular we're going to be betting it we're going to be talking about it a ton here on this channel got a great show a fun new show showing up on thursday be on the lookout tomorrow for a promo dropping. And then uh, Friday, I'll be doing Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks in the NFL streets. So we'll be covering week one here on the Odd Shopper YouTube channel. Only for 21 and over for the Bet365 offer. And again, Pennsylvania, Iowa, uh, Arizona. Get yourself $150 in bonus bets when you bet $5 and get 50 spins on the virtual slot machine. Only for 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All righty, y'all. Let's get to it, shall we? Uh, giddy up 13 games. Producer Jacob, let's get to the picks. Game number one, we have Nostrini, Nostrini, dinner. And then Kate Povich on the other side. Uh, it's just a ridiculous line, yet again. Kate Povich at minus 290 is kind of hilarious. It, it's kind of funny. Nick Nostrini is awful, but I can't bet this. Talked about it the other, uh, one and a half, two and a half, both of them obviously came to fruition. White Sox are up to nothing. You could have got... Baltimore at minus, I think the best I saw was minus 180 or something. They were still minus 180 when they were down two in the first thing. I mean, unbelievable stuff. It's such a mismatch. And again, the White Sox bullpen is trashola. So Baltimore, ugh, I can't bet these. You shouldn't bet these, but like, I, I know I'm going to obviously lean that direction. Just next. Now I got two lean likes on the card. I have two of them. Now, Patrick Corbin has done some really good things lately, and I don't even want to say that out loud, but, you know, it is what it is. Data is what it is, and he's had some good results. He still has terrible expected numbers for the entire year. I'm not going to go out of my way to back him, but I got to say, I model this for last five. He comes out as positive EV against Max Meyer, who just is not a quality of major league player yet. Maybe never will be. We'll find out. 5.61 ERA, 1.40 whip. Had to pitch in Colorado last time out. Does induce a ton of ground balls. 10 ground balls to two fly balls there. Last time out in Colorado, that was decent enough. The modeling, I, I can't do it. I'm just going to give you the option on this one. The next lean like is the one I actually bet. So it's Patrick Corbin plus money if you really want it. Why you would want it, I don't know. But again, it's 2%, 2%. This is insane to me. And in Washington, hey, Dylan Cruz. It's a better lineup on the Washington side, I would say, top to bottom now. And they're going to be pretty good against righties. Next game. And we have a play for us. Minnesota at Tampa Bay. Uh, David Fiesta, Fiesta. Uh, Jeffrey Springs coming off of his... Uh, you could be my silver spice. Absolute smash fest by him, just like that song. Smashes. And how they kept it off the Dreams album, I will never figure out. But then it got released and it blew up on the live DVD. I'm, of course, talking about Fleetwood Mac, but nobody cares. Cool, let's talk baseball. Jeffrey Springs, 3.670 ERA, 1.44 whip. He is one of the better pitchers in baseball when healthy. Now, he got a late start this season, didn't pitch until June 30th. But so far, in those six starts, still doing everything that he possibly could to show out. And then goes into Seattle and mows down nine, five innings pitch. Only 79 pitches. They're they're monitoring his pitches as they should. Again, it's kind of a difficult division there. Hale Central's pretty difficult, though, too. I like the under here. I think both pitchers are pretty decently uh, decent backs here. I think David Festa Fiesta has that strikeout stuff. And now, finally, not going to be taking on Atlanta in a positive game environment or hitting environment. That is St. Louis, which was a good hitting environment at in Target Field as well. Cleveland at home. I mean, he's had a tough gauntlet of a uh, schedule here of late at Texas, at the Cubbies with the wind blowing out, at the Mets. I mean, my God, at Arizona. That was his first start. I mean, David Festus had a tough run of it. 
in Tampa should be able to have that change of working. It's looking good. Just no runs, please. Philly at Toronto. And again, this comes down to modeling and price and probability. Of this Phillips character and the Chris Bassett fellow is getting no run support coming off of his absolute best outing of the season against Boston last time out. Of course, gets smacked up with a loss. Uh, but Mr. Phillips on the other side, he's actually won four of his last five games that he's appeared, which is pretty insane when you think about it. Now, correction, the team has won four of the last five games of which he's appeared. He got completely bludgeoned in a couple of those starts, including eight earned, four earned, and five earned in his last three against Seattle, the Dodgers, and then at home against Miami. Still continued the trend of getting hit up. 5.50 ERA at this point, one two two whip. I think he's a little bit better than that, but still, I'm leaning the Toronto side, and I will say, this could have gone into like a lean light category, but continuing, I'm just going to keep the trend of like, try to keep it even keel here. The Washington Miami one, Washington money line. I'm not going to be betting that. I could get to plus 110. I'm not going to back Patrick Corbin, but I think here backing Chris Bassett and what we're seeing from him, I think it's doable. Also doable, 50% off your first week or month in the premium Discord. Now, we've had some interesting days here in the Discord. Again, everybody freaked out. The round robin, oh no, on Sunday. Yes, we've done a ton of round robins, and they have been crazy profitable over the course of this entire MLB season. There is no disputing that. It is stone cold fact. They get posted on that premium Discord, and they do not get taken down, friends. We've had ourselves a lot of fun over at Odd Shopper. And then in the marketplace now here in my individual channel, having the picks, having the premium discord. And then one day, hopefully this Padres freaking ladder can get there for me. That would be really, really hurtful. But uh, overall, it's been a really, really good run. And we're going to continue MLB till the bitter end, as well as NFL. We're going to set our sights on Thursday for Baltimore at KC. Looking forward to that one. Updated all my stuff. The first lock is officially posted for the NFL season. Can't believe what I ended up landing on, but hey, data is data. And if you want to get that play, sign up down at the lo link below because get 10 bucks for your first week. I got over 100 bucks invested in that one play. So we're definitely going to be firing up a lot of goodness. If you want to get a part of it, sign up down at the link below. Lindy50, again, $10 your first week, $25 your first month. Back to the picks. Cutter Crawford and David Peterson up next. And I don't have a ton that I want to go out of my way to go pick on with Cutter Crawford. I still think he's pretty decent as a major league baseball pitcher. Uh, 428 expected slugging and 10.5% barrel percentage. We've got to figure out some of that other stuff, but the hard hit isn't necessarily showing up in a prominent way. 35.9%, uh, pretty good from Cutter over the course of the season. He is an extreme fly ball pitcher. You always need to be paying attention to game environments for him. But David Peterson, 6.3 degree launch angle, pretty low on the launch, 52.7% ground ball percentage, but... He goes into that category of pitchers who I just think has major regression coming. 2.83 ERA in almost 1,500 pitches. This is just absurd when he has a 5.15 expected ERA and just a 17.9% K rate. But one of my favorite things to do when some of these guys must be punished is you look at a fly ball bat, a guy like Tyler O'Neill, 19.3 degree average launch angle off of, and then a smasher of left-handed pitchers, and then a 33.4% K rate that generally bites him. But you put a guy who doesn't strike out a lot of people up there, Tyler O'Neill looks really good to me here, even in City Field. So Tyler O'Neill plus 340 or better, that is where we are going to land there. Colorado, Atlanta. I have a play from this one. I actually have two. Uh, yeah, yeah, we already gave you the first under there. Minnesota at Tampa Bay. This is the second one. That's what I was getting at. Colorado at Atlanta. Colorado outside of Coors. Colorado outside of Coors. Now, is it still a good spot taking on Atlanta if you're Kyle Freeland? No, no, it's absolutely horrendous. But at least look at some of his splits because, like, I don't know why he's been better at home. 3.74 year eighth, 7.34 on the road. But that is not sustainable either. There's no way that at Coors Field, he's going to have better results over a hundred game sample size. That would just be absurd. Or he just really likes the mound and the environment and the 12 fans in the stands cheering for him. No, it's so much harder with a guy like Kyle Freeland who doesn't have crazy velocity. He's going to be somebody who has to get away with some of the breaking stuff. He's kind of a combo pitcher of a sinker slider change. It should play better in a place like Atlanta than it does in Coors Field. But alas, uh, maybe there's a mental block. I don't know. But Chris Sale, friends, he's just absurd. This is an eight total. We're staring at it. And the reason I like the under is Chris Sale. I mean, he gets to take on Colorado outside of Coors. First game out of there. 
under eight. Cleveland at Kansas City. This is the one that I did bet between the two lean likes, but this one actually didn't grade out as well as I was expecting, just sitting with 1%. So uh, again, do doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot to you, but what I'm saying is I think Cleveland should be closer to minus 122, minus 120. And if you're able to get minus 115, minus 116 on a card that looks as thin as this one so far, before the props get added, of course, because the props, that's always another part of it. God, I just got stuffy in here. Allergies, anybody else? Just me? Cool. Good talk. Glad we had it. Tanner Bybee going up against Brady Singer. And uh, Tanner Bybee, he's had some really good stuff here over the course of this entire season. He's ran into a couple of buzz saws, including against Kansas City here last time out. Five earned, eight hits, got hit up a little bit. Is it ideal to be facing him a second time? No, but Brady Singer has to do the same damn thing. So, you know, it is what it is, but Brady Singer didn't face them. That's the ironic part. Anyway, what I'm getting at is Brady Singer has faced this team a lot. They're divisional foe. They've known each other for a couple of years. They're all buddies, old pals, right? I don't know. He was at Cleveland earlier this season and you know, went three and two thirds, only 70 pitches in that one. That's what I have on my sheet. It was like from two months ago. Whatever, you don't care about that. Let's talk about this. Brady Singer, I know he's been decent. I get that this is going to be like a lower variance type game, but I do think Tanner Bybee has the kind of stuff that should be graded above that of Brady Singer. And then you put these two lineups in their current iterations with Josh Naylor, Jose Ramirez, Lane Thomas against lefties going forward. But I mean, obviously that's not Brady Singer here, but I do think that Cleveland is the side that I'm favoring ever so slightly. So again, did I do a great sales pitch? No, because that's why it's a lean like. I'm making a small play on this one purely because I don't want this to get to like minus 122 without me being invested on what I believe has the best bullpen in baseball. It's the best bullpen in baseball. That, that's the other part of it. You know what's so annoying is Paul Skeens. Everybody wants to talk about Paul Skeens. Well, guess what? He is severely limited here, but we're getting some weird numbers. And now I don't know what to make of this because you can see what sports books are doing. It's it's a little nerve wracking. By the way, there are sports books that are now starting to not take two way action on WNBA props, which I'm usually just telling my guy Osmo in that marketplace. If you guys want to check that out, uh, Alex Baker, one of the best DFS players, daily fantasy sports players in the history of humankind, probably the GOAT. But uh, Paul Skeens, Justin Steele, or wait. Paul Skeens, Justin Steele. We're not going to be doing anything with this line at minus 120. I respect Paul Skeens too much to try to go attack that in the first five market. We'll see how the Cubs bullpen looks coming out of today. Obviously, we hope that they're uh, utilized their big boppers because then that means that they were ahead and life was really, really good for our lock. But Paul Skeens is at minus 150. It opened on the under of seven and a half strikeouts at FanDuel. What I'm starting to see is that if there's like a huge disparity or like if books are seeing like the reduction could show up where they say he's going to only have 75 or 80 pitches. They don't want to get sniped on some of those numbers. So they're just making you pay major juice to be getting towards this under. Do I still lean that direction? I absolutely do against a Cubs team that's been firing on all cylinders. 87 to 82. Maybe we see like 75 pitches. I think watching Jones and what Hitch's treatment is here on Monday is going to tell me a lot on what Pittsburgh plans to do with both of those guys down to the wire here. It's an electric game environment in Wrigley Field. The Cubs have been playing great. I think, you know, everybody want to, wants to watch Paul Skeens. He's one of the best young pitchers we've seen in forever. But I'm just going to call it a lean yet again. I know I've been calling lots of these leans on the unders of Skeens. Some of them worked out all right. Some of them have not. But overall, I think I've bet it like once. Once the entire year. Once. That's It's so unbelievably efficient. And people know that they're getting targeted I'm almost putting these up here every single day to have the conversation more than I am to bet it. Just don't touch it unless there's news that pops and then pounce if they say 75 pitch limit and then I'm sure he'll strike out again. Life works beautifully in Pennsylvania where you can bet $5 get 150 in bonus bets before the NFL season starts. All you do is go to the link down below and bet 365, one of the most reputable sports books in the, well, not just this country, but all of the country's international sports book, bet 365, betting $5, getting up 150 in bonus bets. There are no catches. There are no strings attached to that. Get that 150 and utilize it in the NFL streets right now. College football on the weekends, utilize it. Tailing Ben Ross and Makajeski, people smarter than me in the college streets, that's for sure. Uh, sign up down below. That's really all I have to say. Only if you're 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks.
Next up, we have Sonny Gray. We have Aaron Savale, and Aaron Savale has been much better than I expected him to be in Milwaukee. Now, Milwaukee, obviously great counsel. He jumped ship to go over to Chicago, but they've done some really nice revamping still with some of those bullpen coaches. With some like I like some of the changes to what we've seen with Aaron Savali. What what do you we think? Well, what am I talking about? Well, I think part of it is also just having like a new environment, finding yourself somewhere else to potentially build on success you've had at other places, like at Tampa Bay. Aaron Savali was pretty decent at Tampa Bay. He started off the season a little bit floundering, but uh, we're starting to see some strikeout stuff. He had seven innings, seven strikeouts against San Francisco, six nothing, wiping of the floor with them. But against Sonny Gray, am I really going to be attacking him? Probably not. But I do think that we're going to get some wild numbers on a couple of these guys. So there are some different chan chances that, you know, if it's not Sonny Gray, it ends up being Steven Matz. I need you to pay very close attention to who ends up getting the ball between the two of them because it's listed at two different books, two different guys. I think it ends up being Steven Matz, but Sonny Gray, even if it ends up being him, I don't completely hate the idea of trying to back him in some capacity here. Steven Matz hasn't pitched since April 30th. It's been a long time. He was on the 60-day IL with a back injury. He was horrendous coming into this season. Now he could have a relief role later. He could have something else going on with him. Lots of blurbs that I was reading about Stephen Matz trying to get caught up. What's his velocity looking like in AAA? How's he been pitching, you know, in Memphis? Because I think that's, yeah, they had six outings in, in Memphis that I broke down and didn't see anything that looked all that positive for him. Jackson Churio, all I can say are positive things about him lately. Guy's been on another planet. And I feel like because of what Jackson Merrill's doing, it's not really discussed as much. Guy's hitting 278 as a rookie, 18 homer, 68 ribbies, 787 OPS. Goes yah yah again against St. Louis with four ribbies and three walks, getting tons of respect now. Jackson Churio, just get on this. I know Willie Adamas has homered like what, four or five games in a row now, too. But Willie Adamas, you're getting really short numbers. And Jackson Churio going through his last five. I can't believe some of the numbers we're getting on this. So if I'm seeing something better than plus 350 against this guy, probably not good. But if I'm seeing plus 350 against Steven Matz, sign me up and twice on Sunday, Jackson Churio to Homer. I'm calling it a lean like because I'm pretty confident it ends up being Matz. But if it's Sonny Gray, just stay away. The Yankees, the Texas Rangers with Carlos Rodon and Andrew Heaney. A couple of southpaws duking it out on the mound. Uh, Duke, oh, hope he's doing okay inside without me for like 20 minutes. But anywho, we were looking at the Yankees. Yeah, they've been floundering here of late. We'll see how they handle business uh, or if they do handle business on Monday here. I ended up staying away from that one. Did see Ben Raza ended up on the Yankee side there in the premium discord. But uh, I did not have the gumption. Thought I'd let it play out. I'm not going to let this one play out without being on the Texas side, though. I understand the Yankees bring all of that ass to showbiz. I don't know what I was trying to say there. But I definitely know that Andrew Heaney had a weird last start because I like some of the improvements that we've seen from him. Some strikeout stuff that is starting to show up. But that last White Sox outing, five innings pitched, only 71 pitches. Part of that is because he warmed up the day before and then it got rained out after four pitches and then moved to the next day where he still started. I'm glad that they limited his pitches, but should be extra fresh coming into this one. He's inducing ground balls. He only had the two strikeouts against the White Sox, but again, eight and eight against Pittsburgh and Minnesota before it. I think you get him back on schedule here. I think he's going to continue to roll. I think plus one is too good up against Carlos Rodon, who uh, let's just say he's had some struggles himself lately. Five earned against Washington and a loss on the road last time out. This isn't recency bias because, I mean, you run the year-long sample size, you're running into a wall. But I think this is a different version of Andrew Heaney. So I'm actually going to isolate first five money line as a lean. I might double dip this, but the opening numbers are not there for the first five. They are for the money line. I made a play on this at plus 116. You can also park the bus and see what happens here on Monday. And I don't know. It seems like you get a lot of those New York betters that just... You know, Yankees, they're a publicly backed team. That's how it works. What you know about Paul A? Oh, let's talk Walker Bueller and Reed Detmers. Reed Detmers, once upon a time in a land far, far away or in a year that was not 2024, I think people would look at Reed Detmers and say he is the future ace of the Los Angeles Angels. Yeah, I'm not saying that now because he got recalled from AAA Salt Lake and he has been terrible at the big league level this year. 6.14 ERA, 1.48 whip. I remember before this season, there were a lot of fantasy people. I know you were. You were high on Reed Detmers. I was not. The main reason is he's a southpaw. 
in a ballpark that I think plays up for power. He hasn't necessarily had like as good a strikeout stuff. It's it's shown up at times at the big league level, but he doesn't have like a repetitive off-speed pitch that I think he should really be going to. He's got a slider, a changeup, and a curve. He throws them all about the equal amounts. Doesn't really have that secondary go-to pitch when he's up in counts to really put guys away. And it's starting to catch up. Now, he's had strikeout stuff in the past. Don't get me wrong. And even this season at the big league level, 25.3% K rate. But like, people were talking about him being Chris Sale. And that is just not who he is. He does have a 3.73 expected ERA for what it's worth. So he's had like better stuff overall. But I see runs in our future, especially with Walker Buehler on the mound on the other side. But the Dodgers, yeah, this feels like too good of like a square peg, square hole. I like the Dodgers on the run line still, even with Bueller. He's going to get back to being that dude eventually. And Reed Dedmers, best of luck to you. This is about as bad of a spot as you could get dropped off of the plane and having to skydive and find your spot and run around in the wilderness. And I don't know that analogy. All I was thinking about the whole time was Tropic Thunder. Producer Jacob would like you to know that I didn't hit the parlay aspect of that one as much as I should have. The Dodgers on the run line, then the over of nine. I got lost in thought. I got lost in thought. Luis Castillo and this Jin character, they are not going to make me lose any sleep or thought. I'm not going to bet this at these numbers. Minus 150, that's where I've got this. Again, within two cents, I'm not going to be betting that. This Jin character. I, 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 Jin. I don't know why I thought that. We should just put the lean at over seven and a half. Let's go to the last game. I actually have something to talk about there. Hello, Ryan Nelson. And couldn't you know it? No lines out yet. But knowing that it's Ryan Nelson, and I think you know where I'm heading with this one. He's been kind of a darling of mine in a couple of facets. I really like the idea of trying to invest in some of his properties. Now, Ryan Nelson has found some strikeout stuff. They have retooled this guy in a pretty prominent way. And... Inducing more ground balls, 4.23 ERA, 1.28 whip, the pitch mix. The guy has gone at least six innings in four consecutive starts. He's only given up two earned tops in any one of those starts. And now we're seeing the strikeout stuff, nine against Philly, seven against Tampa, seven against Boston, four against the Mets. Now, San Francisco, well, Eric, you know, they've been a lot better. Yeah, but they still strike out a ton against righties here, north of 24.5% over the last 30 days. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Ryan Nelson could have a field day in a great pitcher's ballpark. And uh, yeah, just got done with a very, very competitive, well, not competitive at times. It got lopsided in a lot of those games, but a wild series against the Dodgers, if you will. Ryan Nelson will eat some innings for him. Ryan Nelson has been a wagon over the course of the last month for this Arizona team. Pretty easy to see why they've been smashing in the second half of this season. But now they're getting Erod back. I know today wasn't pretty, but Ryan Nelson, we're going to ladder him up to seven at least, potentially eight. Ryan Nelson, want to see the odds tomorrow, but assuming we get five and a half with like plus money to the top, I see six, I see seven, potentially eight, but I'm going to say at least a ladder up to seven because I love the strikeout stuff against this version of the Giants lineup. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Head to the comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist on the board for this lovely Tuesday slate. Monday's kind of been a weird one for me. It's like, hits, hit a pick em card, but then just, you know, you can only get a number of dollars down on that. And then there's this, and then the Padres. The Padres put like four or five up in the eighth inning. That would make me happy. One nothing in the eighth inning. Come on, guys. Anyway. We're done. Bet365, sign up down below. Marketplace, sign up down below. Thank you, Producer Jacob. Until next time, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Tuesday.